Hey guys, it's Danny here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be talking all things skincare beauty as always with a focus on my Botox experience. So for those of you who don't know, I did have Botox last year. I've been very open and honest about it. I'll actually put the video here in the top corner for you guys to go and watch over on TikTok of me having the Botox done. Like I said, it's been something that's been a very open book on my TikTok all about Botox. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about whether I think it was worth it, would I do it again, the pros and cons, all that malarkey because the Botox has now officially worn off. <laughs> so let's get straight into it. Okay, so let's get straight into the Botox, my thoughts, my feelings. So very quickly to say, like I said before, this is not a video advice. This is me simply reviewing my experience as someone who had Botox. Would I do it again, etc., etc. So I actually went for my first ever round of Botox about eight months ago. I had it in two places, between my eyebrows and in my masseter muscle. So the reason that I went for those two locations is number one, I am a frowner. If I'm not wearing my glasses, I'm frowning. And these lines were starting to get a little bit more deep in set. And I was looking at members of my family and seeing, okay, so this is, this is, this is where we're going, right? And I actually think that I frown a lot more because my job is on my phone. So I'm looking at a small screen a lot of the time of the day. And I just was like, okay, I'm getting a lot of tension headaches here. Let's go and do a bit of Botox and see what happens. Secondly, I got it in my jaw, in my masseter muscle because I am a jaw clencher. Um, and some mornings I'd literally wake up and not be able to open my mouth wide, wide enough to eat. The headaches, the pain that comes with having a strong masseter muscle and clenching your jaw is not to be underestimated. So I went for those two locations. Let's talk about the pain and the experience in clinic having the Botox first. So I would say that between my eyebrows, the pain was maybe a one out of 10, extremely painless. I barely felt everything. It felt like a tiny needle prick here. I think this area is not particularly filled with nerves to be honest, so I didn't really feel anything. However, the masseter muscle, this muscle was quite strong on me that even when he was injecting, he was like, oh gosh, yes, it's, it's very strong. And I was like, uh-huh. Um, pain wise, I'd probably say this was more like a seven out of 10. And it wasn't that it hurt, it's just that it was quite uncomfortable because You'll have, you have to like clench your jaw while they're doing it so they can find the muscle. And then you can really feel like a needle penetrating into your muscle. So not the most comfortable experience in the world, but it was nowhere near like crying painful kind of thing. You know, it wasn't that bad. So yes, that's my pain threshold and that's how I felt about both locations. Now, let's start off by talking about the pros, the things that I liked about the Botox before we go into the cons. So the first thing I would say about the Botox, I loved how it looked. Instantly, I was not frowning here. I was looking at my forehead area as a lot more smoother because I'm not creasing my head so much. So I really liked the effects that I got from it. Same with my jawline. I love the fact that my jaw was not being clenched and even when I tried to, I was not seeing this kind of like poking out muscle. I personally didn't notice any facial slimming, but my mom and friends and family did say that it looked like it slimmed down because this muscle had relaxed essentially, which is the reason why a lot of people do get Botox in the masseter muscle, even if they don't particularly clench this area. It can be used for facial slimming and just reducing that profile look. So yes, I did like the way that it looked. Secondly, I liked the impact that it had. I stopped the actual physiological things I was doing. So I stopped frowning and it would force me to put my glasses on, which was something that I was not good at doing with the Botox helped me to think, okay, I can't frown. Let me get my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. And also with my jaw, it made me think more about clenching my jaw, which is something that I was doing subconsciously, which was quite difficult for me beforehand to kind of stop myself from doing. So it was really good in that sense that both areas, it made me think about what I was doing to prevent the long-term damage essentially I was doing, particularly in the jawline. So those are the things that I really loved about it. Let's talk about the things that I didn't love quite so much. So number one, something that I, I mean, this is kind of like a crossover one because for me, I was lucky that it did last for about four to five months. However, something that I don't like about it is the fact that it doesn't really last a long time. In the grand scheme of things, a couple of months is not a long time and it's quite an expensive treatment to keep up. Like I said, mine's worn off. I personally don't really feel that I need to run back and get it done straight away. However, I can understand if you've had several areas done, you're more mature than me, that this might be something that, oh gosh, it's wearing off. I need to go back and have it done which can be quite an expensive thing to upkeep, especially if you're doing more than one area. Um, so I would say, doesn't last a long time and can be quite expensive to upkeep are definitely two cons for me. And another con that I found for me is that it didn't kick in very fast. 
Now I think this is down to whatever chemical is used for your Botox. So I'm definitely keen to explore different brands of anti-wrinkle and see the impact it has on me. But it definitely took a few weeks for me to actually feel the difference from the Botox. So what I mean by that is it takes a while for the chemical that's been injected to actually relax the muscles. And I'd say probably it took around three to four weeks for me to really feel that I could no longer contract this area. And it was quite hard in the jawline because, I mean, I was having it because I was in pain. And the fact that it took another few weeks for it to really stop me from doing it, I was still in pain for quite a while after shelling out quite a lot of money. So one thing I would definitely say and recommend to other people, if you are interested, do some research around the different types of anti-wrinkle slash Botox and see what could be the best one for you to use in the area to get the results that you want a lot faster. And the final thing, which is the main reason why I'm not really running out to go and get Botox again, I feel like it really impacted my smile, which is something that I kind of struggled with because my job is being on camera. I'm a smiley person, I'm a happy person. So the fact that when I was smiling, I really struggled to give you my full smile, which was something that I found quite difficult whilst the Botox was still active. However, what I would say, the good thing about Botox is, of course, it's a muscle relaxant, so it doesn't last forever. It was only for a few months and actually no one else even noticed it, it was just me. So that's something I think to be conscious of and aware of. Wherever you're having Botox, just be conscious that, you know, it can actually have an impact on other parts of your face, how your face interacts with your muscles. Of course, if this muscle is weaker, it's going to be harder to kind of lift this all the way up because that muscle is part of that journey. So that's something I would be really, really conscious of before you do potentially go ahead with Botox. So there you have it. That's my kind of pros and cons lift of Botox. Overall, would I do it again? Absolutely. Like I said, I'm not sure if I'll do it down here again straight away. I feel like having my Invisalign has also helped me from clenching my jaw so much. So potentially, this is not gonna be so much of an issue for me anymore. However, I would definitely do it between my eyebrows again and potentially in the sides of my eye here because I am getting more deep set lines there when I'm smiling, potentially. Who knows, we'll see. You guys know I'm very open about these kinds of things and I'm happy to share and talk about it. I'd really appreciate if you'd be respectful of me when we do discuss this and kind of share your experiences. Less critiquing of me would be great. <laughs> but anyway, I would love to hear your experience of Botox. Are you someone that's had it before? Did you enjoy it? Would you do it again? Is there a brand of Botox or anti-wrinkle injection that you particularly like that you'd recommend potentially for me that's a lot faster than what I had? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. If you're enjoying my content and want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. And of course, check out my podcast, Beauty Inside on 101, available on all your favorite streaming platforms. I hope to see you guys very soon. Take care. Bye.